Hey guys, Mrs. Marple here again. Good to see you. I hope you guys had fun with the last drawing activity that we worked on. It would have been the Sleepy Sloth right up here. Today we're going to do another draw along. Um, this one is going to be a flashy unicorn and here's my example right here. So this is going to be a really good one where you guys are going to have lots of options and choices to make your unicorn special. If you decide that you don't want it to be a unicorn, you can just make it a regular horse or maybe you can make him um, a knight's horse and put some of the, the fancy stuff on him, um, like the reins and stuff. But what we're gonna do, this is another Deep Space Sparkle lesson. Um, if you haven't had a chance to go check him out, you might. There's lots of other lessons that you could do at home if one draw along a week is not enough for you. Um, I'm going to include the draw along directions and the different options. And of course you could do a whole lot of different things on this too, but it has eyes, hair, mane, and some other detail choices for you. So this is gonna be included in the information with this video. So the flashy unicorn, you can see here, it's gonna be a profile view. That means you're gonna see the unicorn from the side. It's just going to be like a yearbook picture. It's only gonna be from um, the head down to the neck. We're not gonna do legs. Um, but if you decided you wanted to do legs and all that, you're welcome to do that. But today my directions are just going to be for the face of our unicorn. So what you're going to need for this today, you're going to need paper of any size. If you even just needed half of this paper, you're welcome to do that. Um, you're going to need an oil pastel, crown, marker, or pencil to do the drawing with. Um, I'm going to be using an oil pastel and I'm going to use a purple pastel for this because my black pastel is getting kind of small after all of the drawing I've been doing at home. So I'm going to use a oil pastel, but like I said, you can use a crown, a marker, colored pencil. I mean, you can use anything you want to draw with, but I'm going to use a pastel because I'm going to paint. And optional, um, after you do the drawing, um, painting to fill it in, you could use watercolor or temper paint. Temper paint's just a little bit messier. Um, so I'm going to be using the watercolor. But if you have markers, crowns, colored pencils, you can color in your unicorn with whatever you want. And then optional glitter. Now I know a lot of you guys don't have glitter at home because it's super messy, but I've got a couple of other options that aren't quite as messy that you might think about um, using sometime here while we're on break or sometime after school gets back in, I'll let you use some of mine, okay? So gather your supplies and meet me back here at the table when you're ready. Okay guys, welcome back. We are ready to start our flashy unicorn. If you have printed out your step-by-step -step guide, you're welcome to use this, or you can just follow along with me. Looking at the guide, it's important to remember where our unicorn is going to start. It's gonna start somewhere in the middle so that we have room later on for things like the horn and the neck. So try not to put it too close to the top or too close to the bottom. We're gonna start somewhere right here in the middle. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to be drawing an upside down U for the ear. Okay, so I'm gonna start about halfway with my purple pastel, you could use black. And I've got my upside down, kind of sideways looking U. This is gonna be the ear of our unicorn or horse if you decide to do a horse instead. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the muzzle, the nose and face of our unicorn. Remember we're doing profile view, so this is sideways. We're gonna go down and back up. It's like another U, look at that. Small U, big U. Ear, face. So after you have your face done, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go um, in front of this U just a little bit, not way back here. We're gonna go just a little bit further up, closer to the nose, and we're gonna draw the neck. And we're gonna bring the neck all the way down to the bottom of the paper. So I'm gonna take my oil pastel and I'm gonna draw a straight line down, okay? Now we're not gonna draw the back of the horse's head right here because we may want hair to go in front of it, like my example here. I didn't draw a hard line on the back connecting from the ear down because I knew I wanted to put some hair here. Now, if you want your hair to be on the other side of the neck, you can certainly draw a line from this ear down to the corner, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna start with some hair. So with my unicorn, I'm imagining long flowing hair. So I'm gonna start at the ear and I'm gonna draw a wiggly line 
all the way down to the bottom of the paper. Horses have nice long necks, not as long as a giraffe, but they have long necks. And then I'm gonna do another wiggly line, starting at the same area I started my last wiggly line. And I'm gonna give it some space. They're not right next to each other. I want long, thick pieces of hair, so when I go back to paint, I'll have plenty of space to get colors in there. Okay, we're gonna do another one. And if you wanted to, of course, you could change the shape of your hair. It doesn't have to be long and wavy like this. You could do zigzaggy. It's completely up to you. Now, this is the back of my mane. Now I'm gonna do the front pieces, almost like bangs, on my horse. So I'm gonna come up from the front of my ear, up and down, and I'm gonna connect that piece there. I'm gonna add another one on top, kind of like I did here at the back. I'm gonna start at the ear, I'm gonna go up, follow the same line, and down. Now if you wanted to add some more pieces in there, like I may want to separate maybe just this one one more time. So I have three in the front and three in the back. So I can do maybe a color pattern, maybe an ABC pattern there. Okay? So now we have our hair and our body done for what we're going to do for this. The next part we're going to do is we're going to draw some of the facial features of our horse. So on your worksheet here, okay, they've got some different ideas for the mane right here, if you wanted to do. You can see there's like wavies, and there's straight lines, and then there's kind of points on the end of these. Those are all really pretty. But I'm gonna focus on the eye right now. So there's all of these choices right here. My example has its little eye closed. You, of course, can do any style of eye that you want. I'm gonna do a really simple eye, maybe one like this with just like some eyelashes. And you're only seeing one eye because this is in profile. You should not see both eyes. So I'm going to come in here, draw my circle, maybe add a little highlight. A highlight is where the light source hits an object the strongest, and usually when it's on something kind of shiny or wet, like an eyeball is shiny, because it, whenever you blink, you know, it, it provides moisture, and so there's a highlight on my eye. And then I'm going to do some eyelashes. Now if yours is a boy unicorn, Boys have eyelashes too, but you don't have to draw eyelashes. Maybe you want to draw an eyebrow instead. I'll draw an eyebrow. After your eye, you want to go down to the muzzle. That's where the nose is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start about halfway up my nose, and I'm going to draw a curved line from the top to the bottom. That curve is going to help it look rounded, like a form instead of a flat shape. And then we need a nostril. That's where you breathe through your, the noses, um, the holes in your nose. And that can go anywhere on your muzzle right there. Now, you can either have no mouth on your unicorn and it just be really simple, or if you want to put a mouth on it, it would go about here. And of course your unicorn doesn't have to be smiling, it can be a grumpy unicorn. Sometimes it's funny to have different facial expressions. And I'm going to go up and add an extra little upside down U on the inside of my ear. Just like that. Now, on your Create a Unicorn worksheet here, there's lots of different options for your horse. If you want to just be a horse, look, I'm done. But I want mine to be a unicorn. So I need to draw a horn, which goes right in front of the ear. So I'm going to come right here, and I'm going to go at an angle, diagonal. I'm going to go up and then down, just like that. So now I have my unicorn horn. Okay. Now you can see that there's lines on this unicorn horn, and they don't go straight across. Again, we want it to look like it has form, so these lines are going to be more of a curved line, and they're gonna go down at an angle. So I'm gonna start up here. Just like that. Now after you get your horn done, you're welcome to add things like flowers, diamonds, cupcakes, rainbows, anything like that to your picture that you want 
to make your unicorn special, you could add um, necklaces or glasses, little hats to your unicorn, whatever you want to make it fun. And don't be afraid to draw things in your background. You could draw clouds or sunshine, or you could draw a landscape back here, picture of outside, draw your horizon line, and draw something back here. So use your imagination with this. I'm gonna add a couple more things to my unicorn, and then we'll be ready for paint. Okay guys, we are back. I have finished all of the details that I care to add on my unicorn. You can see that I've added a couple of things. I've added a necklace or two, or maybe they're the bridal. Um, and then we've got some flowers. I added some little, these are gonna be little jewels. I'm gonna put glitter on these later. On the hair, I added some extra eyelashes, a little line over the nostril. I added a couple of different things on here, but I feel like now I'm ready to go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually, I put a lot of little things on my picture, and so I think I'm gonna use some markers to color in some of the small things. This would be a good thing for you to use colored pencils on if you have them. Just these small little, maybe the centers of the flowers. And because my unicorn is so, so magical. I am using some glitter markers. Of course, you know, these are a specialty item. You don't have to have glitter markers. You can always add glitter later anyway. But I'm gonna use these because they're really fine point markers to color in the small things. On top of my magenta purpley pastel here. And I do still plan to paint most of it and when you're choosing materials to color your picture, it's important to think about how much time you're wanting to spend on it. So if all you had to use today was markers and crayons, I would choose the markers for the small things and the crayons for the big things. Because there's a couple of different ways you can use crayons. You can color waxy waxy to have really dark color. You can color really lightly and fast to color large areas. You can also peel the paper off and use the side of the crown to do a crown rubbing if you just decided to do that. Okay, so I'm gonna go through and color just a couple more things with markers um, or highlighters. I've got these really big, big scented highlighters I'm gonna use to color some of the stuff because they're neon. And you know what? This project reminds me of Miss Martin, and so I'm gonna use colors that remind me of Miss Martin and her unicorn themed life. So I will meet you back here in just a minute. Okay, so here we go. This is all of the fine detail that I care to do on this before I start painting. Um, so what you need to think about now is what you're gonna use to finish this picture. Um, I'm gonna choose to use watercolor paint. I'm gonna use my regular praying set with just the regular colors and I'm going to mix it up a little bit with my metallic Uli watercolors. So make sure that you have your water and your brush. I like to have at least two different size brushes, a small and a large. Large for the big stuff, small for the tiny stuff that I didn't already color with markers. So you could always just leave your unicorn white. Uh, uni white unicorns are um, pretty common um, in storybooks and movies and things like that. But if you wanted to color your horse, of course, you would go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and paint mine kind of like the unicorn from the book Sparkle. Now, Sparkle is a book that is about this little girl who really wants a unicorn and she sees an ad for it in the newspaper and they're 25 cents. And she's like, oh my goodness, what a steal. So she sends in her 25 cents, and while she's waiting for her unicorn, she is daydreaming about what her unicorn will look like, and she names him Sparkle before she even meets him. And it's a boy unicorn, and he is blue with a pink mane and a pink tail. And so that is how I'm gonna paint my unicorn today. Now, my unicorn looks very much like a girl right now, so I think it's gonna be a girl but I'm still gonna paint it like her, the way she envisioned her sparkle to be. Now, when Sparkle arrives, 
it is not what she thinks it's gonna look like. Sparkle actually looks more like a goat, which makes the book a lot of fun to read. So at the end of this, I'll show you um, a picture of the cover. I can't think of the author illustrator right now, but it's a great book, my kids love it. A couple of other unicorn books. Um, unicorn Expert is a good one. I know they, they had that in Scholastic for a little bit. Um, and then there's Thelma the Unicorn. Um, the same person who did Pig the Pug did Thelma the Unicorn, and that's a really funny one. So I'm just gonna go through and paint my picture, and then I will show you what it looks like at the end before I start to add my glitter options. Okay, so we're back. I have painted my unicorn, or all that I care to paint of my unicorn. I left the background white. Um, now, if I'd left my uh, unicorn white, I would have definitely painted the whole background, but I feel like because my unicorn has so much color, I feel like if I painted the entire background, it might be a little too much. It might already be a little too much, I don't know. So, now I'm gonna show you some options for glitter. Um, I do not keep loose glitter in my house that, um, it's just a personal choice. It just, it makes too big of a mess. I hardly ever use it in my room either because it's just, it's too hard to clean. It is fun to use, but um, I have to balance what is manageable in my room with so many students. And so, I mean, even at home, I prefer an easier to clean up option. So what I really like is this Sargent Acrylic Glitter Glaze. Now it is acrylic, so that means that, you know, once it dries, it, it's there for a long, long time. So you need to be more careful with this, but um, it's a medium that you can use over just about any kind of uh, media that you draw with. Um, um, I use it a lot for scrapbooking. Um, I, I use it a lot for everything. You can make painted glitter paper with it, or you can paint over an existing project with it. So it's an iridescent glitter, if you can kind of see that on the cap right there. But um, I used it on my sloth. I don't know if you can see his shimmery. So it doesn't mask the colors that you use. They're still nice and bright. It just gives it a little bit of shimmer. And you just paint it on with a paintbrush and you're done. Now, if you've got white streaks, they dry clear. So there's my glitter glaze. And on the unicorn I have here, I'm gonna use some glitter glue. Now Crayola makes it, Elmer's makes it. Um, and so they've got a bunch of different colors. Okay, I actually prefer the glitter glue that's in the Elmer's glue bottle um, that you can open and close a lot easier. These are not the easiest things to use, um, but you know, I like to try new things. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add two colors of glitter on my unicorn. And you can either pour this into a tray and paint with it with a brush, or it has a nozzle so that you can just apply it to the areas that you want. So what I'm gonna do, this is a clear glitter, and so I'm just gonna put it on some areas of my unicorn, and it doesn't have to be dry. And the way that I'm applying this now, it's gonna be a little bit raised, kind of give it a 3D element, but it means it's gonna definitely take longer to dry, and it will need to dry flat. So you won't be able to hang this up on your refrigerator tonight, that's for sure. Okay, so I've got some clear glaze, not glaze, glitter glue on my unicorn. Okay, and I'm gonna add some gold on my horn. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put it on a big glob like that. And then now I'm gonna use a paintbrush to put it on because I don't want it to be that thick. That might take a couple days to dry that thick. So I'm gonna use my brush. I'm just gonna paint it on. And this glitter is not going to get all over your house. You're not gonna have to worry about vacuuming it since it's got that sticky on it, whatever it gets on, and it's washable. This, this one is washable, the glitter glue. The Sargent Acrylic Glitter Glaze is not. So, if you definitely need washable in your home, glitter glue is the better way to go with that. Okay, so I think I'm done with this project for today. Um, I would love to see what you guys come up with with your unicorn. Um, I will have some pictures of some different kinds of unicorns like a superhero unicorn and a cowboy unicorn. 
If you're not wanting to make um, a flower crown and a, and a girly unicorn, that's okay. So I'll have some different um, ideas for you. But um, keep doing art and have fun, and I'll see you guys next time.